from Xfinity Center, where tonight Maryland is all over the FDU Knights. It's Fairleigh Dickinson University, 75-50. This is Wayne Viner. This is Mason, our designated intern, and off camera is Todd Carton and Jordan running the camera in the background. Mason, what'd you make of today's game? Uh, another snoozer out here on a weeknight in College Park. Not much competition. Fairly Dickinson able to stay in it as most teams are early, but the Terps just pull away in the second half and at the end of the first half. Well, at the end of the first half, Maryland puts on a 24 0 run. It was 20 to 19. Turgeon calls a timeout after some bad offense, and woo, the Terps just take off 24 points in a row. You can't get more dominating than that. But I believe they were tied in the second half with Fairleigh Dickinson. Yeah. An interesting performance and an odd sequence around this basket right here sparked the Turgeon timeout that started that run. Just some weird things going on still with the passing and the offense and the turnovers. But it seems to be getting better when the game gets more competitive. There aren't as many bad plays on offense by the Terps. And, you know, they get it going. It seems to be every game they just start slow and then at some point it just clicks together and then you see that team that we saw at the beginning of the season. Well, I'm really looking forward to some actual basketball games. I know it starts up with Penn State on the second, at Michigan State on the fourth. It's time for some conference play and, and end the cupcake season. Hey, do you like the ugly sweater? No, but when we were walking around, a lot of people seemed to, so I have to give it something. <laughs> All right. Well, this I, like, I like Todd's more. Todd, like well, we'll see Todd's in a second. This is the Viner Four Gates post game show here at Xfinity Center, Maryland 75, Fairly Dickinson 50. We'll be back in a moment. Terp Talk is brought to you by Viner Consulting. Help us support for your computers and networks. Managed services and 24 hour a day help desk are just a few of the affordable benefits. Get help when you need it by Terps that you know. Call us at 301 251 2900 or visit oneviner.com. Back here in a quickly emptying Xfinity Center with 12,133 saw the Terps and Fairley Dickinson tonight. It wasn't 12,000 people in this building. No. Well, they sold 12,000 12, tickets, but there weren't 12,000 people. Todd's in the team, the Maryland women's lacrosse team, got a schedule plug in there in the second half. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, Maryland women's lacrosse. Well, what, what can you say about Maryland women's lacrosse? What are you? National championships. Yeah, there's a lot to say about that. Do you think that Turgeon was helped tonight with Wiley, Jackson, Checo being out, that he couldn't run five guys in and out, and he sort of stick with an eight-man rotation? Well, I think that he's been doing that the last couple of games, and, and I think that his substitution pattern will be, I don't think we'll see him make the what they call the hockey substitution and changing lines going forward. Uh, although we do, I did hear you mention uh, Cupcake City. We do have one more, uh, UMBC, next week. Well, we don't want to offend uh, our friend Bucky, who was a, a rabid retriever. Hey, I'm a retriever, too. I, I graduated from UMBC, but, you know, it's, it's another cupcake game. Just sad to look at the schedule that the women and the men have played. The out-of-conference schedules is just... So leaves a lot to be desired. Well, even the women, I mean, they got that game in against UConn and South Carolina. And that's it. And, and, and they've the, played the 120th weakest, uh, number 120 RPI schedule right now, a non-conference. So. so who's the transfer the women have? Uh, her name's Eliana Kristinaki. She's from Florida. We'll have her for the remainder of this season and one more. She had her first game uh, yesterday up at Coppin, scored 32 points. Uh, bombing three, shot six of 13 from three. Uh, she's going to be a tremendous addition. She, she's uh, really got great basketball sense. She's thinking ahead. She, if you watch her, she's one play ahead. So, right. And I think a little bit of that might be missing here on the men's side. Just as Mason was saying, too many turnovers, too many passes high in the air where a bounce pass might have been the called for play. The, the, the Terps seem to just... A, make lazy passes, and B, get themselves 
stopping their dribble in places where they only have one option, and it makes it easy for the for the opponent to to uh, create a turnover and 17 turnovers. It's not something that's going to get fixed during the season. We're we're going to live with this for the rest of this year. I mean, I think the most obvious one of the game was that play at the end of the first half. Herder's dribbling the ball down the court, and he threw a full-speed football interception. I mean, he tried to fire one in there, and it, there was nobody open. Yeah, I, I don't, there were a couple of passes that Kevin made, even though he had a phenomenal game, two assists short of a triple-double. Um, there were a couple of passes that he made that I, I kind of looked up and said, who's he throwing those to? Who's he throwing them to? Well, I'm going to go for my player of the game is Bender, who showed up early, a lot of little baby hooks in the lane, and for a while it was Maryland's leading scorer. Well, yes, he was, and, and, and I don't know why the Maryland got away from that. They, they shot 23s today against a team that had a 6'5 guy playing either Bender or Bruno in the post. Who should have just touched the ball? Every Whoever five was guarding for Fairleigh Dickinson, that should have got, they should have touched the ball in the low post. Okay, I agree with that. Nickens comes out three for three, ends up four, seven or four of eight from the on the arc. Yeah, it was one short, if you didn't take that one at the end of the game, of shooting 50% tonight from three. I wish he could be out there more, but you just never see the defense improving. Yeah, and he had the one foul where he fouled the three-point shooter coming in late in the in the first half. Um, you know, that that's Nickens. You know, you bring him in, you hope you get your threes. Although, I will say, for fans who have been calling for a lot of Tamayich, I think maybe we got a sense of why we don't see as much Tamayich. As, uh, yeah, and I'm one of those people. Is, he the, right is he the Ryan Brand of the basketball team? I mean, possibly, but... He's going to have standing some, up, folks. Excuse me. I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to see some on and off nights for some of these guys. And I think when Bender's having an off night, he's another guy that you can put in there at the four. Okay. All right. Well, if he's another guy and he plays the rotation, I want to jump back to something that was going on last night. We were on the air on 1300 CBS Sports Radio. Uh, we were talking about the best moments of 2017, and Todd tweeted in or texted in. I didn't get to it. Your moment of 2017 was? The, the comeback of the field hockey team and the, the, a team making it to the national championship game and coming that close to winning a national championship for Missy Mahar that started 6-5 and five or 5-6 five and six and, and just took off at the end of the season. Phenomenal. Mason, your moment of the year? I got to say those lacrosse national championships, it was just a great weekend and you know this is one out there for Bruce, that men's lacrosse championship still gets me excited as we approach the, 2000, the 2018 season. Six weeks to go and I'm going to go with football with Texas because I'm a football guy and that was real football in a real football stadium and to be the last people in the stadium standing on that uh, Longhorn head at 50 yard line going, hey, we beat Texas. That was just great. So Wayne, I saw you at DJ Durkin's press conference after signing day yesterday. And what I want to know is if DJ was this happy signing the number 18, 19, 20 class, what's he going to be like if he ever signs a top five class? The head coach at Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, it's incredible. I, I just, he, he just has so much energy. It's, it's phenomenal. That had to be a pretty good day for you, too, as a football guy. Yeah, but Bruce said on the air, and I agree with him, that I get overexcited about football, and then somebody gets hurt, somebody shoots an air gun at somebody else, and we're five and seven. Well, you know, we're building. And, and one of the things I like about what Durkin is doing is he's, he's doing – the same, following the same path that Steve Aird has followed in volleyball. He's building, he's not bringing in a lot of transfers. I've never heard that reference before, that the football team's following what the volleyball team's doing. It's very good. Thank you, but they are. He's, he's building through the draft, so to speak, and I, and I really like that. He's building his depth, he's building his quality, and it's, pheno it's a phenomenal class to, after a four and eight season. It's true, that is true, and I agree that that was uh, a uh, great job. They didn't get anybody flipped away from them for once. So right now they're 22 of 23. Or? Yeah, and that, that's a great thing. And as we like to say, the score is now off the scoreboard and the time is back on. So it's time to go. So good evening and happy holidays from the Red Turtle Turp Talk crew. This is Wayne Viner, intern Mason. Todd Carton on Rev Todd and in the background Jordan behind the camera. Thank you. Thank you to everybody for watching. Ugly sweaters rule. Ugly. We have to get Mason a sweater and 
Good evening from Xfinity Center, where Maryland takes it 75 to 50.